Welcome back, everybody, to another modern video here on Twitch or YouTube, depending on where your viewing pleasure takes you. This was a deck submitted by Force Pitch Force, <clears throat> and it is a Grixis Hellbent list that we're going to be playing today. So, might have some cards you may have never heard of. Imaginary Pet is a card from Urza Saga. And uh, here's an interesting little uh, little way to remember all the, the Urza sets. The Saga symbol... Uh, looks like a gear, so you can kind of trace an S around the outside of it. Here, I'll show you. I'll show you what I'm talking about, so I don't seem crazy. Like, you can kind of go make an S here, and it's the only one you can do that with. So that's a Saga. And then, uh, let's look up, like, Thwart. I think that's a Destiny card. So then if you had, like, Thwart... Oh, that's a Mercadia Mask card. Dang, I guess there's nowhere to Saga. Anyway... We can go to set here. I'm gonna show you because I'm I'm this is this has worked for me for years. Okay, so if you go to destiny here, <clears throat> it kind of looks like you can kind of make a lowercase d out of the the bottle, out of the flask. Uh, so that's an easy way to remember D. And uh, the hammer for legacy you, looks like an obvious L. So that's uh that's a that's a way I've always remembered how to how to remember uh, Urza's Destiny Legacy and Saga because all of the logos can look like the letters uh that make the sets so just maybe I'll help you guys out one day if you ever need to figure out which one's Saga which one's Destiny and which one's uh and I'm going to add one more to these cuz apparently this did not uh you know. Anyway, Imaginary Pet <clears throat> is a 4-4 four, four for 2. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you have a card in hand, return it to its owner's hand. So basically, you want to be hellbent. At the beginning of your upkeep, you, so you want to en en empty all the cards in your hand at the end of your turn. Then when it gets back to your turn, you'll have no cards. It'll check on upkeep. Then you'll draw your card for the turn. So, that's pretty cool. Uh, next next card is Blood Rage Brawler, a 4-3 for 2. And you have to discard a card when it comes into play. Um... <clears throat> Another card that takes advantage of us not having cards in hand. And then we have Lupine Prototype. Another 2 mana 5-5. Five, five. So these are our three guys that really want to be in, in play when you have no cards in hand. One thing I'm looking at the deck right now. And I'm, I'm thinking we one card we absolutely want <clears throat> is Hollow One. It just makes sense. Season's Greetings, Kai the Collector. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the... I guess it's, I guess it's a season, right? It's a Halloween season. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm trying to find the email for this deck list. Okay, so Force Pitch Force said the goal is to aggressively mulligan to good hands and use cards like Hazaret, Lupine Prototype, and Imaginary Pet to get some good beats in. The sideboard was thrown together rather quickly, so change that as much as you feel necessary. I'm also not in love with Megas of the Bazaar, it just seems too cute. So replace that if you have something better in mind. Um, <clears throat> I also don't love Molten Vortex. Molten Vortex, unlike something like uh, Sulfuric, not Sulfuric, um, Seismic Assault, is only lands, right? And we only have 18 lands in the deck. So our odds of having enough lands to pitch to this and having, like, red mana to do it is pretty low, I think. So I would actually take out Magus and Molten Vortex and put in Hollow Ones. That would be my suggestion. Because, like, a Faithless Looting into, like, a Hollow One is pretty good. <clears throat> Another issue is that, like, how do we discard consistently, though? Are there any Madness cards? Because we're discarding a lot of things. Let's look up Madness and Set. We will go to Modern. Or not, for Format, rather. Modern is not a Set. This deck could use a few one with nothing. Well, you're in luck. There are two in the sideboard. Unfortunately, one with nothing also discards our threats as well, so. Tireless Tractor, thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. What's that, a sorcerer that makes your opponent draw and discard? Uh, I don't know, that's very... You might have to be a little more specific there. <clears throat> oh my god, I was just kidding. See, I can't tell with you. Nobody knows with you. Um... I don't even know what Avatar, Avatar of Discord does, to be quite honest with you. Is that the one where, like, you discard two cards when it comes into play? I 
Wow, there are a lot of avatars I do not own. That is interesting. It'd be great if Wizards was like, hey, you make so much content. You make daily content for Magic the Gathering to promote our game. Here's a god account on Wizards on Magic Online. <clears throat> because you clearly spend a lot of a lot of hard earned hours promoting our game. Why is it not showing up? Am I missing something? Do I have a setting checked that I shouldn't? No, I guess not. I literally just have modern. Oh, it is there. All right. <laughs> I'm literally only looking at the cards that show up, which makes no sense because I'm, I'm aware that I don't have it. Uh, when I was about to full sacrifice, at least discard two cards. Yeah, that's actually not bad. I kind of like that a lot, actually. I bet they're like a nickel. Hmm. So this is interesting because I'm making, making changes before we actually play any matches with the deck. But I think that's okay. Wow, Arclight Phoenix is now 10 tickets. I wish I picked them up when they were like 3. That's pretty insane. I did not see that coming. I bet these are less than 10 cents. That would be my guess. Seven cents, and for the promo, 20 cents. All right, regular it is. Four avatars of Discord for 28 cents. More like avatar of Discord. I mean, yeah, that is, you are correct. That actually is right. You have nailed it. All right, so I can see cutting two Megas and two Vortex for two of these and two hollow ones, maybe? Because it's not a card you want a ton of hollow, not hallow. And also, you might not have two cards to discard to this guy. Also, it's does it doesn't it does die to oh, this dies to abrupt decay and to. Uh, Fatal push pretty easily. All these guys thought of Fatal push pretty easily, unfortunately. That's my only concern here, is that they all died of Fatal push. But um, you know what? It's okay. Let's give it a go. I don't know what else to make of the deck yet because we have not played a game. So let's try it out. And we'll see what happens. Grixis Hellbent. Submit. Is Hollow One any good? If we don't have it in the opener, it doesn't do much. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's what we're trying to figure out, I think. I also... I do kind of like Fiery Temper over Lightning Bolt. I'm going to click it three times before I actually do the thing. All right, hold on. Let me, let me change Fiery. I was looking at Fiery Temper when I was seeing Madness, and I was like, I don't know if we can... See, the thing is, you're going to be discarding so many cards that, like, Fiery Temper might just be straight up better all the time. CTB, welcome back. Thanks so much for the resub, buddy. Lightning Bolt is obviously great. Um, but I don't know if it's Fiery Temper great. Tiff, what's going on, buddy? Thank you so much for the raid. You are wonderful. You are a wonderful human being. And I don't... I think we're good like this. I have no idea if Hollow One's going to be great. <laughs> it's amazing. You guys are amazing. Let's try this guy out. Why 
Wandering Mage. Let's see what we got here. Oh, double hollow ones. Oh, Faithless Looting, though. We discard two, so they cost one one. So we want to just play this on three, I think. Yeah, this could be good. Post Hunters for Defense. Good. <laughs> That's pretty that's pretty wonderful. I messed up my own How did I Oh, I messed up the I messed up the tag. I messed up my own emote. I'm terrible at life. That's really sad. He'd be so sad if he knew. He'd be like, "Why would you do this?" I'm fixing it right now because that's the kind of commitment I have. All right. So I was actually like, let's draw thoughts these here. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. Hopefully you just don't have all three in your opening hand. Just to be clear, they mulliganed into mine, tower, power plant, Karn, Karn, Ugin. Lucky, 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 lucky. Cool. <sighs> Boy. Sweet six card hand. Sweet six card hand. Thought sees one more time. Fiery temper. Not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. Maybe we want like things like Bloodgast in here. We want cards that actually do things when you discard them, right? Like Bloodgast would be great. Well, so they're gonna have a Karn next turn, which is pretty cool. Which means they have to exile this guy, I guess. Uh, we have Lightning Axe in the sideboard, actually. I don't think it's better than Fiery Temper, because we, we, we're, we have enough cards that make you discard things. We want cards that actually do things when you discard them, I think. So we could play this and just play a hollow one. I kind of want to hit a land here, but I guess we can hit it off of Faithless Looting. Yeah, I think we want Bloodgast. The problem is all of our cards, we want all the cards in our hand. We just don't. I'll go to my thinking place again. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get rid of prototype here. They're gonna probably play Karn, kill this guy. We can go looting, discard fiery temper, and if we hit a land, we can hollow, play a hollow one. Yikes, power plant. And then they have the white bordered lands, like, come on, get it together. I feel like if you're going to turn three Tron me, the least you can do is have the black border lands. So long, Blood Rage Brawler. What are the odds they don't have another land so they can't play Ugin next turn? It's got to be zero, right? Huh. Fascinating. Yeah. 
no land, huh? Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty sad. Boy, if I had a way to discard one more card, I could uh, play both of these hollow ones. Oh, boy. So now they can just play Ugin and kill our Blood Rage Brawler, unfortunately. Don't discard Fairy? Why? Oh. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that would have been good. That would have been the play right there. Oh, the third Karn. <clears throat> yeah, that's good. You, uh... That's weird tech. I forgot the ability was discard. That's interesting. Yeah, that's a big difference. That might have actually changed the entire game. Yep, we're going to go to the next game. This is the only match we would have ever had the two hollow ones in our opening hand, I'm sure. <laughs> Fulminator Mages can come in, unfortunately. Wow, that was so that would have been such a great play. I was just too quick and I didn't actually process that. Yeah, we really want cards that, like, because we're discarding all of our good cards, right? So your problem is, like, you, you discard two cards, but, like, we're discarding this guy and this guy, right? And these are the cards we want in play. So I'd much rather have cards that we don't want in play. Like, Bloodgast. Is there anything else that's good from the graveyard? I don't actually like Fairy Macabre in, in this matchup. I mean, it would have been great in that. Oh, God, the discard is free. You're right. It's so dumb. Oh, Squee actually sounds very, very good. Original Squee? Oh, yeah, that sounds great. Let's do that. So let's say Squee. I don't know if I have any original Squee. Oh, I do. All right, cool. All right, I'm going to take out. We want room for like three Squees and four Blood Braid Elf. I think we can take out one Inquisition. Not Blood Braid Elf. Uh... I'm literally having a stroke right before your eyes. Um... blood gassed. <laughs> oh my god, I couldn't think of it for a second. Totally blacked out there. Yeah, see, like, I don't want to discard any of these cards is the thing. And we kind of have to. Oh, tower, tower, power plant, all is dust. Welp, I guess we'll get rid of the map here and hope you don't hit a green source. Sorry, I'm taking my girl to the store. I'll be popping in if I can. I almost read that as pooping in a can, and I was like, that's not that's not what you want to do. Don't do that. So they played Tower. Let's get a Blood Crypt. Definitely want a red source. Definitely want a black source. Yeah, Blood Crypt's fine. I'm going to discard the Avatar because we don't actually have a third land. Maybe Avatar is not. I think Avatar, discarding two cards might be too much of a commitment. So let's go here. We'll take out the Avatars. Uh, I don't think that the one Fairy Macabre is super relevant if we're starting to put cards that are good to discard in the deck. We'll see. Also, Squee seems very good with the... Uh, Alright, Power Plant. Power Plant, okay. Okay. 
This guy's actually this guy and the hollow ones are very good with the um against like things like all his dust or Ugin because they just can't be swept away. Alright, well you hit a forest in two turns. That's pretty nice. I assume you will get a mine. Hmm. I guess we just do all three modes, right? I don't want to give neg two neg two though. That's sad. I do kind of want to take your all as dust. Demigod's only great if you have other demigods, though, and this deck is not likely going to get to five to cast a demigod. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Like, the only way we're attacking with one of these guys is if we give Neg two, so we can deal seven this turn. I do kind of get one. I, if we, like we can't play this guy because then they just play all his dust, and then we have to get rid of at least two guys uh, that can attack. So I think we have to get rid of imaginary pet. Why not cast post combat? What's the difference? Is there a difference? I mean, they have one colorless mana. I don't. I don't think they're gonna really have a response here. I mean, the reason I'm not casting a post combat in this specific situation is because if I if I if I attack here, well, I know I know what post combat means. <laughs> My point is, uh, if we cast it now with all three modes, we get to attack with this guy because we'll have no cards in our hand. That's why we're th deciding what we're doing before combat. Because if one of our options is to attack with this guy, we have to do that before combat. Otherwise, we can't attack with the guy. <clears throat> um. Um, actually don't know what to do here actually we have to collect a brutality because we have to get all this dust out we can't actually decide to play another colored creature if they're going to all this dust so oh uh, two modes uh, lose two cast choose you choose you one two also I could see having stubborn Owl in this deck too stubborn Owl seems better than lightning bolt things Let's get rid of all his dust. I guess you're going to play a Worm Coil Engine, which seems pretty insane. Not sure we can beat a Worm Coil Engine this turn, so you actually have it all. Six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. You played a, an Ancient Stirrings, and you played a Mine. So I don't think you actually have this Mine. I think the Mine is about doubled up. Seems good. Yeah, unfortunately this deck has literally nothing to do against something like a Worm Coil Engine. I have no idea how we beat that card. Like, you just can't. You, you, we just can't win. Like, I actually don't think there's a single card in our deck that can deal with that. Shattering Spree, maybe. I mean, they gain six. Even if they block here, they gain six. We, they take four. They actually gain two life. Yep, that's the end. All right. Playing the Tron deck in the two-man queues with white border lands. Seems good. Um, I actually don't care about Fiery Temper. I would actually take out one with nothing. I don't actually see the benefit of that, but I would bring in more Pyroclasms. All right, so this is 51 cards. I'm going to bring in Bloodgast. Because <clears throat> that seems great. I'm going to bring in Squee. Well, 
What's a good way to deal with a friggin' worm coil engine? They were at 10. So, like, if we actually had Vapor Snag in that game... Maybe two Vapor Snags is where we want to be. That's interesting. Definitely don't want to play against you again. Have absolutely no desire to uh, to play against Tron again. Are there any Phoenixes that might be good here? Yeah, probably. There's uh, Chandra's Phoenix. You can probably just sit in that queue and wait for a, a tr oh, someone who wants to play against your Tron deck. Um, I actually don't love Simeon Spirit Guide here, but... Chandra's Phoenix. But see, like, if we add Chandra's Phoenix, we add Hollow One, like, at what point are we not just the Hollow One deck? And this is one of the big things, this is one of the big issues I have with, um, with critiquing decks sometimes. It's that a lot of times you almost morph into the deck that's the better deck. You know what I mean? So, like, if you wanted to have, like, um... Like a tribal deck with Collected Company, but then like you have a lot of humans, and then I'm just like, well, what if we replace this with Reflector Mage, or what if we replace this with uh, Champion of the Parish, and no, oh, well, might as well put Thalia's Lieutenant in here, and then it just becomes the human deck, and it's not, I have this, I have this rant about net decking, right, it's about, it's about being in favor of net decking, and um, I wrote it down. And I think I wrote it down. So it says, if anyone had an unkind word to say about net taking, I would like to direct you to the following paragraphs. Uh, this is actually something I wrote in an article, I think. Whenever you try to come up with a unique strategy, you have to ask yourself if you're using the best tools at your disposal, right? If you have enough awareness and are honest enough with yourself to realize you are not, then you might reevaluate what you've chosen. So, like, if I'm saying, oh, squeeze the best the best choice, or, like, you know, is imaginary pet the best choice? Maybe not. Maybe hollow when it's just a better card that does a similar thing, right? So, once you start being honest with yourself, you're like, hmm, maybe I'm not using the best tools. Um, so, once you start to do that... Uh, you start replacing the subpar tools with more efficient and powerful tools. Eventually, your unique ro your unique rogue strategy has become a net deck, essentially. Um, and the reason net decks are a thing is because players have put thousands and thousands of hours into these decks. And they've already found the best cards and the best strategies. It's a collective hive mind coming up with the best cards and the best strategies. By being against net decking, you're basically saying I'm against utilizing the data that I have and all the, the man hours that people have put into finding the best combinations of cards. And I'm just going to ignore that for some like misplaced pride. And it's very, very strange. But anyway, that's, that's, that's my net decking rant. That's not it, actually. Are you gonna? So then I went. I go on like, are you really gonna run? This is this was back when like Dark Ascension Standard was around and Thrag Tusks were all over the place, right? And I'm like, are you really gonna run Vorapede over Thrag Tusk? If yes, why? Thrag Tusk is a better card against both the control decks and aggro decks. When you start getting trounced by the aggro decks and Vorapede doesn't save you, you're going to switch to Thrag Tusk. When your Hound of Gristlebrand isn't working out, you're going to realize that the second body and and the two life that Huntmaster the Fells provides makes him a better four drop. Eventually, we wind up with Jun Midrange because we're being honest with ourselves about what cards give us the best chance of defeating the largest number of decks and opponents. It just makes sense. Like, you can play worse cards. You can play cute cards. You can play fun cards. I'm I'm the biggest proponent of that ever. Shut but take my money. you can't begrudge people who net deck because it doesn't make any sense. You're basically saying, how dare you use the best tools that hundreds of hours of data have provided? It makes no sense. I don't think they've tested all the other cards extensively. I think you're wrong. I don't think you have any... I, I don't think you have any idea uh, how many hours people put into testing magic matches. Uh, and collectively, especially, I, I, I don't think that's true at all. <laughs> I'm still against that. That's, that's funny because I'm like, here's a valid uh, argument against why it's... I think it's laziness. All right, well, I mean... 
you are entitled to that. We could actually just play Imaginary Pet here. Should have cracked the land, but I was on the on the net decking. What are our basics? We just have a swamp, right? So we can get a steam vents and a swamp. I don't really want to do that. I also don't want to take a million here. I guess it's fine. I think that's true. I think people are afraid of data. I mean, even if we just play imaginary pet every single turn, like they just have to deal with it, right? And so my next, the next thing I said uh, was, does this mean we shouldn't net deck? God, no. I'm the biggest advocate I know of innovation and the brewing of rogue decks. But what it does mean is that we're doing ourselves a disservice when we lie to ourselves about what cards are better or worse than others. Can you play Archon of the Triumvirate over Angel of Serenity? Of course you can. But you should definitely acknowledge that the Angel is a more powerful card. And if you don't come to that conclusion on your own, someone else will. Because thousands of players are trying, trying thousands of combination of cards all the time. You're only making it harder on yourself by denying yourself the resources at your disposal simply to prove that you're completely unique. The only thing you will uniquely do is lose more matches than the players who are playing established decks because they are established. Again, this is not an attempt to dissuade you from innovating. I'm simply suggesting you stop judging those who skip the middleman. Not everyone has the time to be the next great deck genius and they just want to play magic. Oh, what's the... Oh, the, the LES? Oh, that's the Lower East Side. You boys are making me New York hungry. I don't think we can win this match, especially because of our life total at current. But, you know. And the thing is, like, if you see the Pro Tour, right, and the and decks come out of the Pro Tour, and you're like, wow, these decks are good. Um, you don't have the right to say that they didn't put infinite hours of testing into these decks. You just don't. You just can't say it. Because they did. <laughs> That's literally how testing for the Pro Tour works. And, uh, you know, that all that is all that being said, like... If you think you can find a better deck than the Pro Tour decks, go for it. Knock yourself out. But when you can't, you can't be mad at someone for using the deck that someone else has put infinite hours of work into. Like, because I could try to do it myself. I could try to recreate the deck, but it already exists. So, what, what do you want me to do? Like, not play the best deck and pretend I tried to create a similar version? Like, none of that makes any sense. Suspend a Rift Bolt, huh? Well, all of our creatures cost less than two, so this guy's pretty problematic. Faithless didn't go to nine. We can hollow one, hope to hit another hollow one, I guess. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pay with a uh, with a black mana though. Yep, coded. So we're going to six, and then we're probably dead. <laughs> oh, this is how we went only. Good times, good times. Yep. And it's fun to come up with, you, you, with weird decks. Like, you never have to say that to me, man. Like, I am the one who's like, yes, I love coming up with cool decks, fun decks. But I can't get mad at someone if they're playing Tron. I'll get salty. I'll get, like, rem remotely, like, mildly salty because the deck isn't fun to play against. 
But I'm not mad at you for playing Tron. Like, I can't blame you. Like, it's an established deck that does very well. You could try to come up with your own Tron deck, but it's already made. So, like, either you're going to pretend you don't have the information of what a complete good Tron deck looks like, or you're going to... I, I don't, there's no real alternative. I don't like the imaginary pets at all. The imaginary pet's the only reason we're blue. And then we take imaginary pet and we're just so close to hollow one. I just don't think we can dump our hand fast enough for imaginary pet to be good. Quacker. I saw it, buddy. I saw the I saw the aggressive uh, the aggression aggressive lich. Shut up. One, I don't have to watch Kenji any longer today, bug. <laughs> also, Kai, one cogent pro net decking argument, bug. Really appreciate it, guys. Really appreciate it. I will play first. Uh, yeah, we'll keep it. I'm actually looking up Hellbent cards right now. Advanced text Hellbent. Let's see what their actual Hellbent cards look like. I bet they're all terrible. Demon Fire. Remember Demon Fire? It was basically a, a worse Bane Fire. You'll get caught up in the Bane Fire. Let's get a Blood Crypt. Lupine Prototype. Look, a lot of these creatures don't do anything, unfortunately. That's my biggest problem. Yes, that's right. My biggest problem is that the creatures don't do anything. Yeah, all the Hellbent cards are pretty terrible. None of them are really constructed playable, unfortunately. Oh, the old Howie's Eye Diamond. That's a good one. <laughs> the, the drinking come down sweats or the Howie so hot sweats, but dang, I was sweating. That's That's rough, man. I hope you made it through, because, boy, you deserve it. If anybody deserves it, you do. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of how far you've come, Quacker, from your addiction in the past. Rift Bolt. Oh, look at that time counter. That one's great. I haven't seen that one yet. I mean, I feel like if we want to empty our hand, we should just be playing Burn. Look at they're like, yeah, your idiot can't block. You can't do anything. We just can't empty our hand fast enough for these guys to be good. I think that's just the, the fat truth of it. <laughs> oh my god. Let's hit this boy up. Okay, we'll get rid of a Vapor Snag and a Blood Ghast. Play this, this, and this. We can bounce you. We're gonna go to nine and then we're gonna go six. We're basically dead, like we just have no recourse here, unfortunately. Let's see what you got here. Boros Charm, Boros Charm. Rest in peace. <laughs> Uh, I think I'll watch Lightning Helix. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it's fine. We're at a point where, like, what do you have? Four, five, six, you have seven damage in hand? Eight, nine, ten. All right, so if you hit any land, we're dead. We actually can't play this, but we kind of have to because we're dead anyway with this guy. All right. We're having a good time. 
JK, we're dead. What? I'm sorry, why didn't you attack? Oh, they have to have less than 10. Yeah, okay. I thought it was us for a second. JK, JK. When are we getting Frank Swag like t-shirts? I don't know. Do you want do you, what I need I need t-shirt designs and I don't know how to go about doing that. It's a, it's a project that I just have not undertaken yet. All right, that one's gone. If you hit a land, we're dead. I really got excited about the idea of this deck, but I don't think it's holding up, unfortunately. Oh yeah, we're dead. We we're supposed to bounce that guy. I, I'm just not, like, even if we bounce this guy, like, they still... We go to five, and then we go to one, and they literally have Lightning Bolt in hand. Oh, it's so sad. Like, taking a turn off to play Lupine Prototype instead of something like a Tarmogoyf is just so hard to do. Uh, I wouldn't spell Rek like that. I would probably just spell it R-E-K-T. Especially because that would be more con compact on a shirt, which would be nice. Instead of having some awkward long text. I think all decks need more makeshift manigans. Manigans? Mannequins? Kins? Gins? Manigans? That's a weird word. I agree that Squee is the opposite, but the problem is like Squee is only a it's a May ability, right? So I it's it's not like we have to return it to our hand. Makeshift mana queen. No, I wish I... a mana queen sounds like uh, an actual card in Magic. Oh, that's the mana queen. I have no idea what to do here. <laughs> Quick, Frank's moving. Let's talk about socialism. That's a great idea. Can you be my marketing manager? Additionally, I would like a pocket where Hunter's head is popping out of the pocket. That's really. I think that's uh a solid marketing thing. Yeah, so here's the thing. I, I, it's, this has been actually, after two rounds in, this is already a particularly difficult deck critique because here's the thing. We have these two cards. This one is a staple in modern right now. It's a 4-4. This one is also a 4-4, right? This one costs two mana, so it can be fatal pushed. This one costs five, so it's never getting fatal pushed. Our deck is revolving around putting cards into the graveyard. So if we do that, this guy usually costs one mana. Very consistently can cost one mana. Imaginary Pet will always cost two mana. This guy gets bounced to your hand if you have any cards in your hand at all. This guy never gets bounced. The Hollow One is just such a better card than an Imaginary Pet. Blood Rage Baller does seem pretty good, though, as far as, like, discarding a Blood Gast or a Squee, though. I'm going to take out the blue altogether. Are y'all ready for this? Mannequins? Are you guys talking about man? <laughs> hey, what's that restaurant with all the goose on the walls and the mozzarella? <laughs> oh, you mean mannequins? <laughs> oh, that's a good, uh... That's a good reference. So if we can take out the blue, I think we have a much better... Like, we don't have any blue cards in the sideboard, even. It's literally just for imaginary pet. I don't think that's good enough. So, we'll put in the Scalding Tarns. We'll keep in the, the dual lands here. And we'll bring in Delta. So 17 lands. We can add one mountain. 
Oh, actually, I probably want black cleave cliffs too. You're gonna be at the bottom. Yep. Um, you usually don't want mountains because of blood crypt, uh, blood moon. However, I don't mind it here because. Uh, take out two deltas and two tarns. We want a bunch of fetch lands because of the blood ghasts, but. Oh, Flame of Kel does seem good. That's interesting. The problem with Flame of Kel is that we don't have enough cards to take advantage of it. Right? Like. I guess it's a red source. Hmm. Oh my god, you guys are amazing. Just amazing. I mean, it could it's good for like, oh cool, I have a Hazaret. Do I have more? Can I get another Hazaret? Maybe two Hazarets is where you want to be. Hazaret seems very good. What else comes back from the graveyard other than the Bloodgast? Oh, uh, it's actually plus two, so Squee, Squee would deal three instead of one. So, it's even better than you thought. Um, I'm going to bring in more of this guy, for sure. <sighs> Whoa, Squee. Yeah, that's right, buddy. That's right. I don't actually hate Hoken. I, I imagine it's pronounced Hoken. You may cast, you may play knight cards from your graveyard. None of these other idiots are knights, unfortunately. I don't think that matters, though. It's also a 3-3. Three, three. I thought it was a 2-2. Two, two. I want to play two Hokans and two Squeeze. Because, like, Bloodbridge Roller just puts it right into the graveyard, right? So does Collector Brutality. See, now we have eight cards that we actually want in the graveyard that do things from the graveyard. How much does Big Game Hunter cost to... Uh... Oh, that guy costs one to discard? I like that a lot. Let's put one Big Game Hunter in here. I think one is fine and we can put one in the sideboard. Big Game Hunter, love it. I don't care about Lightning Axe. Lightning Axe can get out of my face. I also don't love Shattering Spree. I almost want, like, Smash to Smithereens instead. That is a beast in my sights. Uh, wrong game. Okay, wrong game. Yeah, I'm going to put Smash instead of Replicate. I do like Fairy Macabre. Uh, I definitely don't want, don't want four Hogan's. I, I, I don't think four Nameless Inversion is also where we want to be. I think all these cards are too cute. Like, in Modern, here's the thing. In Modern, you want to have a play on turn two that affects the board. You want to play, have a play on turn three that affects the board. And you want to play uh, have a play on turn four that affects the board. And I think we're close to that. But, like, if you're going to dirtle around and play, like, Lupine Prototype into Key of the City, and you're not even going to start to get your gears moving until turn four, I don't think you're going to win. What's the card again that puts stuff from the graveyard back into the game? Uh, shenanigans? Monster, what's going on, buddy? I actually don't know what the card to put stuff from the graveyard back into the game. I like that you did add high, Frank. That's good. Add high. <laughs> that's that's a good one. I'm a fan. Oh boy. Oh, yeah, you're talking about Living End. Living Death. Living End? I think it's Living End. Yeah. 
Do we really want to force Simeon Spear Kinds? I don't know. We get two more slots here, though, which I'm actually good. I'm, I'm excited about because I think the blue is really holding. Imaginary pets are really holding us back. Malfagor? How are we ever getting to six mana? We have 18 lands in our deck. You want us to draw 33% of the lands and survive till turn six in modern? I think that is ambitious, my friend. Yikes. <laughs> Why not copy a list like that and replace it for Hollow One because it feels much better than this list. Um, that's the point, though. Like we're trying to see if we can improve this list to make it uh, more reasonable. <laughs> Might as well play Rorik's Blade Wing. Oh, you guys are just now. Now you just guys are just naming random things. I get that. I understand. I got the beast in my sights. Uh, all right, we need two more cards. Two more cards. I also feel like one more land would be fine. I'll put one dragon skull. Dragons. Yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna end well. All I had to do is add one more K. And now we get one card instead of fifty. I got the beast in my sights. I don't think we... So here's the thing. You guys keep naming discard outlets. I don't think we have enough problems... Uh, I don't think we have enough problem with cards that we want to discard. I, I'm reluctant to add Street Wraith because it doesn't do anything other than cycle. And we don't... This isn't a cycling deck. This is a discard deck. Um, we don't have problems with cards that let us discard, like Call the Bloodline. We have problems with cards that do things once they're discarded. Could just had one more big game hunter. This could kill a lot of things in modern, right? Could just be one more thought seize or one more inquisition. Cycle counts as discard, but not for things like Lupine Prototype. Like, we want no cards in our hand. Alright, let's just play it like this. We'll see what happens. I think this is a significant enough change where I feel okay with it. Zombie Infestation. That's okay. I like that. Especially with enough things that do stuff from the graveyard. That's actually not a bad idea. If that if that's the case, I might just want to go heavier on this on the squeeze and the um the other things. Um I'm gonna reluctantly keep this hand. And I have to remember that we only have blue and black now, which is super nice. I can use this to get a Blood Crypt. Cast this on you. I, I paid a black, did I not? Come on. Don't don't be like this. Thank you. Josh gifted the Zichi with the Zichi. Zichi. Zaichi with the sub. Really appreciate it, buddy. Thank you so much. You have one brushland. I'm gonna take this noble hierarch. And then hope you don't get lucky. Brushland down. Okay. Lupine prototype number one. True Fire Captain. I, I Okay, so we've had Spite Mare, Boros Reckoner, and True Fire Captain mentioned in chat. Oh, you got lucky. How nice. And Nest Invader. All right. Okay, so basically you just want us to build the Blasphemous Act deck. That's what you're saying? Wow. Two draw steps, two lands. Seems good. Sky Spawner. Seems good.
I it must be nice when your deck gives you the cards you want. I wouldn't know. Here, not a land. Ready? Not a land. Nailed it. 19 lands in the deck. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 of them are out. That's almost half the lands in our deck. Ooh. So you can play these two, and then we still can't block and can't do anything here. So we're going to take 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Go to 5. We have two Lupine prototypes that are not doing anything at the moment. We actually go to 13 if we want to play Hazoret because we can't play this this turn untapped. Is Black Cleave better than Dragon Skull? Well, my assumption is that uh, we're not going to actually have less than... <laughs> 5x can attack travel, yeah. Uh, my assumption is that like with 18 lands in the deck, we're not going to have more than 4 lands. Like We have one card that costs more than 4. So typically, this shouldn't matter. Can you explain why Blood Gas is good and or better than Reassembling Skeleton? I certainly can. So you see Blood Gas comes back for free. Reassembling Skeleton does not. Blood Gas also has one additional point of, of power, which makes it twice as strong than a Reassembling Skeleton. No offense to the reassembling, reassembling Skeleton, which is a fine gentleman in its own right. You need to build a deck. When a creature deals damage, deals double that damage. Then play Boros Reckoner with like, oh my god. Okay, yes, clearly. Clearly. Alright, we got 15 points on the board, so this is good. Can't attack or block. Can't attack or block. Can't attack or block. Seems good. Also, Bloodgast has haste when it wants to attack sometimes. And, uh... Reassembling Skeleton never has haste. In fact, Reassembling Skeleton comes into the battlefield tapped. Uh, because he's very stressed out and uh, exhausted. He suffers from exhaustion. So, I was actually, I have the, the, the window open and I'm actually looking at gibbering, gibbering descent. Just it's It costs four mana to madness it though. So like we have to play an ability that lets us discard a card, which is going to cost mana undoubtedly. Because I think there's very few free cards that make you discard. So let's say we, we play like a Faithless Looting for one and we have to madness it for five. So that's six, That's or we mana serve four, so that's five mana right there. Not great. What's going on, Outlier? Yeah, I think Zombie Infestation actually is probably the way we want to go. I think that card seems great here. Like, if we were just able to make a 2-2, two -two, discard these, and we'll have three five, five power guys on board. What does the Hungry Howie's Frank look like? I don't even know what that looks like. They're like, yeah, I'll just tag you for nine. This is interesting because we're actually kind of close to killing them here. So Smasher's gone. The problem is that we can't do anything with these guys. This is rough. Um, actually we can discard. Yeah, so it's so close. So close. If we had like a lightning bolt in hand, we'd actually we'd actually win the game. If we had a fiery temper or a lightning, no, well, yeah, yeah, because we can discard. Yeah, maybe. Hold on, what's going on? There's so many better draws that that would have been good here. Thank you, Eckhart. Welcome. Kerwood, thank you so much, buddy. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. Kerwood, you absolute maniac. I will pay three. One, two, three. We're going to discard this guy. Deal two to you. We're so close, man. Uh, 
If we could have cycled this, let's see what we would have gotten. I don't think it would have mattered, but maybe. We'll play two mana. We'd have two mana left over. Doesn't really do anything there. I feel like that game was actually closer than I would have expected. Take two Inquisitions out for two Pyroclasms. I got the beast in my sights. Desecrated Tomb? Is that whenever a creature comes back to the battlefield, you get a bat? The problem is the only creature that leaves our graveyard. Is like, we only have like eight creatures that leave the graveyard, which is not a tremendous amount. Uh, I'm going to keep this hand. I'm going to go turn one Blood Rage Brawler. My face is itching for some reason. I wish we draw, I wish we had like a something relevant to discard other than the face, Faithless Looting, but... Yeah, I figured that would answer your question, Monsonster. Um, man, if this is a blood gas, that'd be great. Faithless Looting still gets us some value, so. If we add Flame Blade Adept and more draw discard spells, like we're basically just becoming the hollow one deck right like that's i think that's what we're trying to avoid we want to have more play in the graveyard than Welcome to this place. I'll show you everything. Could have had a blood gas back this turn to attack with next turn if we did that first. Gotta keep that in mind next time. Alright, you'll name Eldrazi. Eldrazi. Don't be a displacer. Yeah, we actually would have lost blood gas to the pyroclasm though, so I don't feel too bad about that. Dog person tribal. Wow, that is something right there. Um Yeah, all right. What are you going to do? You can have my hollow one. If you want to trade here, that's pretty fine. I mean, blocking the blood gas doesn't do anything, really. Fascinating. Wow, Lupine Prototype actually doing some work here. This is actually kind of comical. Oh, I see a Kappa. I did not... Uh I did not see your kappa at first. <sighs> wow. That 
that's pretty funny. Yep, that's a good one. With our arms wide open. Welcome to this place. I don't know if we have a reason to play this here. I don't think we do. So they're at five. Is ensnaring bridge in the sideboard for this deck? No, because then we can't attack with our creatures either. So then we actually have no win conditions. I actually agree with the Blood Rage Brawler. Like, it seems like it's just a fine dude. It's just a 4-3 out for 2 mana, which is well above the rate. And if you're discarding, like, a Blood Ghast or something, like, not bad. Makes sense. We already can't attack with most of our creatures. Touché. Touché. Oh, that's aggressive. Pyroclasm off the top for the win. Hollow one. I'm game. Let's loot here. At worst, we can play a hollow one for one. Hollow one for one. Oh, discard you. And probably thought sees. Play this guy. Get back the other blood ghast, which is great here. So they got a two here? Are we winning this game against this Eldrazi deck? Bomat Courier? Boba Fett? Oh, look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Roll that beautiful bean footage. I love that. I love when people use creatures. That's probably my biggest. Uh, that's my biggest claim to fame as a Magic player. We'll call them creatures. <laughs> Billy gifted another. So wow, only thirty nine gift subs in this channel. That's not unreasonable at all. Thank you so much, buddy. <laughs> really appreciate it. Obviously. Hopefully, it's obvious. Let's cast you for one whole mana. I also that you, I like that you call them light night bolts. I was like, that's a weird autocorrect. With arms wide open. Oh, that's a good one. Where this is where a lightning bolt would, would come in real handy. I don't even know where you're trying. I don't even know where you're trying to get, man. I'm trying to say 39 is a ridiculous amount. That is unreasonable. But uh, oh, this guy can actually attack. Uh, so they actually just go tap, tap, and then they attack for five, six, seven, eight, nine. I guess we're not dead there. This guy can attack. That's unbelievable. I like your streams and I like Legacy. Can you Legacy for us? I can, 
Not right this second, but I definitely can. I do. I also don't hate Legacy. I think it's also a better format now that Death Ride Shaman is gone. This is nice because we can block the Thought Knots here probably forever. A land off the top is pretty good here. Legacy is your favorite format. Interesting. Interesting. Do you ever go to Mox? Do you ever play Legacy at Mox? I, I loved I loved Mox because um, you could play literally any format at some point because they had so many events and like they always fired. It was actually pretty wonderful. He can attack. He's summoning sick. Oh, he's got the summoning sickness. Legacy of Mox is is great because of that. I always liked I always liked that you weren't just running up against like mono scrubs that don't that don't know how their decks work. Dang it. Tap, tap. They attack with everything. We can block one dude. And then we take nine. Oh, man, this is very close. This is a very close game. Billy, where in Washington do you live? If you don't mind me asking. Because when I was there, I would have actually loved... Bellevue would have been great. I would have loved to be living in Bellevue. I was living in Kent at the time. I feel like we're getting closer to this discard deck. I think we do want some zombie infestation. Let's go hard on the discard. <laughs> That's... Oh, Seattle Parliament. Oh, interesting. Well then. Interesting. That feels like quite a drive for Microsoft. That's gotta be like a half an hour drive, right? Alright, I'm taking the Lupine prototypes out, I think. Were you the hairy-handed gent? My hands are not actually that hairy. So, it was... Not me, buddy. If the hair don't fit, you must have quit. Yeah, I actually didn't mind Kent. I actually enjoyed it. I, I know what you're saying, though. I can definitely... Like, Kent is just like a... It's whatever. But there were definitely uh, nice parts of Kent, and I was totally fine, so... But I don't, you don't want one with nothing because you don't want to discard the cards that you want. You just want to discard the cards that you don't want. Let's get rid of Simeon Spirit Guide. You suck, Simeon Spirit Guide. Get the hell out of here. Get out of my face, Simeon Spirit Guide. I'm going to add one more Squee because Squee is pretty baller. There was actually a ton of good restaurants in Kent. I was always surprised. I really, really enjoyed all, some some of my favorite restaurants were in Kent. There was a, a Mexican restaurant called Aqua Cateros. They were amazing. There was an Indian restaurant. Uh, I forgot what it was called. It was right across the street, actually, from from Aqua Cateros. And it was probably my favorite Indian restaurant in Seattle. I think it was called Curry and Kebab. It was. It was called Curry and Kebab, Kent. And the funny thing is that I ended up moving, obviously. And um, it was... But it's in Kent. Yeah, but like Kent is still part of like Seattle. Just like St. Petersburg and Clearwater and Florida are part of Tampa. Like it's in the Tampa area. So it's just... It's all under that umbrella. It's not, it's not in Seattle proper, but it's like... I think, I think all of Washington, well, I can't speak for all of Washington, but I know it's like, I know Kent did, I know, I'm pretty sure like that whole area, that whole Seattle area, um, had a pretty large immigrant population, which was, which was great. Good point. Cause you could find great food there. Says anyone who doesn't live in Seattle. Right. Well, what does that mean? I don't understand. Is this like some kind of elitist thing where like you don't live in actual Seattle? <laughs> you can't call yourself a Seattleite. I can't tell what's going on. Uh, 
Oh, Cantus and Shallots can't. Oh, that's a good point. That's helpful. I now I know. <sighs> Unfortunately, if someone said where in Washington did you live, I can't say Kent because they won't know what I'm talking about. So common parlance is to abbreviate where you live or, or associate where you live with the major city that's closest to it, especially if it's within 20 minutes away. So you can say like Kent isn't Seattle, it's Kent all you want, but I mean, that's not really how most people think, unfortunately. So, or fortunately, I guess. So, you know. You think most MTG players know where Kent is? I think most MTG players in the Seattle area would know what Kent is, but if I asked any person in a different state or a different city, they're not going to have any idea where Kent, Washington is. I didn't know where it was before I moved to Washington. I think they might know where Renton is, where, where Wizards is located. Maybe. But they would also probably say Wizards is located in Seattle, which is just further proves my point. Right, like if someone said, where do you live? And like you say, if you you say, oh, I live in New York. Uh, you could say you live in New York, like New York City, if you live in the Bronx, if you live in Brooklyn. Like it's just, it's just shortcutting, which you should be familiar with as a Magic player. It's just shortcutting for communication purposes. Uh, we're going to play Brawler and Discard. Hack it. I want to get the other... Nah, we can just get a Blood Crypt here. I think it's fine. We're not under a ton of pressure from this deck. I want to make sure we have a second black for Liliana. So, I have no idea why you'd think people knew where, knew where Kent, Washington is. That's like such an obscure like neighborhood. In It just doesn't make any sense. I'm like... <laughs> Long cut the shortcut. I've actually never heard that, but that does sound like a saffron thing. Um, let's Inquisition you. Let's take your one card. Inquisition, take your one card. Well, we can play Zombie Infestation, discard two cards, but then we're still going to be one shy. Yeah, you just tell people which major city you're next to. Like, no one's going to know, like, if I said I'm from... Like, even... I'm from St. Petersburg, Florida, and St. Petersburg is becoming a huge, huge metropolitan city. It's becoming... It's growing every year, and it's it's an awesome place to live. It's super artsy. It's super cultural. It's a great place. Restaurants are insane. I still tell people I'm from Tampa because they associate that. They know where that is. So if people say, hey, where do you live? You don't say Kent, Washington. You say, I live in Seattle because it's 20 minutes away and it's not a big deal. I guess we can wait to do that. No, we can't actually. We can't wait because... Well, we can wait because we still have to do it on our turn. It's just lands, right? Just mono lands? Sure. Alright, well... You can say I live 20 minutes outside Seattle. You can say that, but what's the point? What does that do? What kind of, I mean, like, yeah, and that even, that even is, it's more descriptive than just saying, I live in Kent. I live in Kent. Where is that? 20 minutes out. It's basically Seattle. <laughs> in 20 minutes, I'm in Seattle. All right. So probably want engineer explosives here for the first time ever. I just give exact coordinates to my house. Oh, uh, it's not a troll land deck. They're playing. They're playing a similar deck to ours. They play zombie infestation and treasure hunt. Treasure hunt will only find you other treasure hunts or zombie infestations, and then you basically just unload your hands to zombie infestations and treasure hunts, which is kind of comical because we're playing two zombie infestation decks. Uh, I'm gonna take out the Liliana. That doesn't seem great. Pew. 
Pyroclasm actually seems pretty good too. Okay, I'll click the link. My God. Dr. Octagon is actually wonderful. That's a great... I'm glad you linked a Dr. Octagon song. I'm going to take out one collective, one Thoughtseize. Because every card in your deck is cheap. And I'll take out the other Liliana. I think Power Class is probably better because it kills all of your things. Oh, you should respond with the city you fly out of. That's a great... That's great. Yeah, that's why that would make sense why I say Tampa. And also if you live in C if you live in Kent, you're still flying out of the SeaTac airport, which is Seattle Tacoma. So you could I mean it's there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to say Seattle. Unless you are from Staten Island, ew. <laughs> Gas. Oh man, this hand is iffy, but if we could one zombie infestation puts this hand through the stratosphere. We have a great number of cards to discard. We can discard four cards in this hand. We just need a way to discard them. Oh my god, I hate you all. Eleven cards went into your hand. And you played a Reliquary Tower. No bueno. Here we go, we're dead. The problem is they can actually wait till turn four, play Treasure Hunt, and then play Zombie Infestation. And then they can wait till the end of their turn to make zombies for us to Pyroclasm. How many can they make here? They have 13 cards. One, two, this is what, nine? No, because they can go end of turn, make the zombies, and attack us for a million. I actually don't like hacking as much just because we don't we never have the mana to cast it I would much rather drop a squee but I actually think it's blood gas here because blood gas is free if we hit a land and we don't actually need we actually this is having this in our hand is net negative anyway this is a good conversation about uh, about the uh, nuance of of where you should say you live in proximity to where you actually live uh, and why you shouldn't be a stickler for judging people for what they say okay so I don't know what any of the cards in your hand are but you are going to attack here we're going to block we're going to take 10 and then we're going to clasm you hop out of bed I get my clasm on Bustin made me feel good there. Can we hit a land? I, th I think we can wait. I think we just have to cast the the pyro clamasm. Like if we don't hit a land, it's really bad. So we're gonna cast pyroclasm here, and then they make one zombone, and that that one zombone is likely connected to the neck bone. I live in Philadelphia. But I usually tell people I'm an hour and a half from New York City. <laughs> Where are you from? I'm, I'm an hour and a half outside of New York. Oh, really? Where exactly? Philadelphia. Oh. Well, that's weird that you would... I'm actually not going to attack because then they make a zombie and then they block it and that seems bad. They have no cards in hand though, so that's good. They could treasure hunt. Okay. This could be good. Discard, discard. Oh, we did it. Discard, discard. Bloodstained Mire. Get back the double gasties. How'd you hook up with the Undies company? They emailed me and they were like, hey, we'd like to sponsor you. Meundies.com slash Frank Lepore. You can get 15% off as long with free shipping and free returns if you'd like. They have some sweet glow-in-the-dark Star Wars underwear available right now. And uh, you guys get to support the stream by using my affiliate link. So check that out. Kai the Collector subtly getting some uh does the founder no it's just a it's a it's a they know they just it's a, it's, it's uh yeah it's a, it's just a, a startup new company that uh does underwear and they they like they like sponsor a bunch of streamers like I know Gabby does I think Caleb does probably uh H3H3 was the biggest one that I, I know of that 
is sponsored by MeUndies. I will return Squiggles. This guy is never attacking. It's just never, just never happening. I guess maybe we shouldn't have returned it, and then we could play this guy and this guy, but then we're still, we still have one card in hand. There's no way out of the one card that we have in our hand. We can Faithless Loot, discard two things, and then we draw two things. None of these things are any good. Undies only mode? What does that even mean? How many can they make? They can't have haste, so I think we're good. I think this is our first... I think this is our first win, guys. I'm feeling good about it. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. What are you taking here? 70? 612? 92? Sounds good. Bloodbridge Baller... Brawler? Baller? Discard... Hokum. I'll be attending zero events that are undies only. No, sir, I don't like it. Bjorn, what's going on? Welcome, 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 buddy. Billy, thank you so much for... Uh... Bjorn actually was at the Community Cup with me in uh, 2016, 2015? It's gotta be 2015, maybe 2014. Anyway, we went to the Community Cup in Seattle and it was wonderful. And uh, Bjorn has been one of my favorite people ever since. So... All right, I'm liking this deck more and more now. I think the zombie infestation was really, really where we wanted to be. <laughs> I think, Billy, did you just hit 40 gifted subs? Wow, I feel like that's pretty ridiculous by itself. So uh, thank you for that. Really appreciate that kind of support because that's ridiculous. And uh, next time you're back in Seattle, you should let me know and I'll definitely come visit because I actually want to... Do you know... Billy, do you know Chris Furterer and uh, Chris Hedrick? They work at, well, they work at um, Mox Boarding House Seattle, previously known as Card Kingdom. But they are some of my best friends, and I, I like visiting them from time to time. And um, we should definitely uh, grab some food and play some magic if I do that. <clears throat> there are a lot of undies in this chat. You are not wrong. This is definitely undies mode here. Is Seattle near Kent? Yeah, it's close. It's about 20 minutes outside of Seattle. <laughs> oh, man. Also, no one says Seattle's in Renton. I mean, I think they say it more because Renton got well-known from being in Seattle. Or uh, Wizards of the Coast. Never mind. I'm not going to talk anymore. Talking is, has become difficult. I like Squee with Zombie Infestation. I don't like it with Lupine Prototype. I don't know if Lupine Prototype is even worth having. Maybe one other Hazaret. I do like having two Hazarets in the deck. All right, I'm going to go a little deeper in this deck because I think this deck is actually... I think we got some potential here, boys. I can't believe Arclight Phoenix is 10. I wish I picked some up. I think instead of Lightning Bolt, we'd probably just play Fiery Temper, right? It just seems better. Um... Also, Hazard is now like 16 cents, which is amazing. How much is the oh, how much is the masterpiece Hazard? 34 cents. That's amazing. How much is regular Hazard? I don't know. Unless it's literally your underwear, I won't buy Wow, that's wow. I I both I'm a little weirded out by that, but I also appreciate it. So Oh, 34 cents versus 22 cents. Eh, I'll get the cheap one just because I already have one of the other ones. It's literally just... It's just my... You know, it's just commitment to uniformity here. Do, do, do. And... Well, we already submitted. You have no tradable tickets to buy this item? Do I need them? I guess I do. All right, well. 
I should have tradable tickets in there. So for trade, yeah, I have tradable tickets in here. Of my 30 tickets, approximately. Add all to open. 37 tickets. Boy, Magic Online is... Actually, you, I, I opened up MTG Arena last night. <sighs> Didn't hate it. Didn't hate it, guys. I might play some Arena later tonight if you guys are down. It might be a bonus Arena stream. I also want to... I, I don't know. Miundi ships the underwear to Frank, and, and instead of shiny, signing them, he wears them for a day before the... Okay, this is... <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. I wonder if... Uh, I wonder if the conversations take this course for other streamers. He's an underwear pirate, except he doesn't steal underwear. He gives them away. Explain me that. I don't think anyone can explain you that. Also, I can do. I currently live. In, I live in Seattle, about seven thousand. Where are you? Where do you? Where do you live? Oh, about seven thousand miles east of Seattle. That's close. Do you just commute, or how does that work? Arena needs a friends list. There, I logged on, and I was like, wait, how do I talk to people I know in this game? Oh, there's no friends list. Oh, that's fascinating. I'm gonna make my. There we go. I feel a little better, a little more centered now. Let's confirm. All right, one more Hazaret goes in the deck. Maybe we want one more land too. I'm liking how this deck is turning out. I'll tell you that much. Which I didn't think I would. All right, we're taking out the Lupine prototypes, unfortunately. Uh, big Game Hunter can go in the... S we'll just leave in the, the Big Game Hunters for the sideboard. Okay. So, things I want are kind of another zombie infestation. Nameless. Oh, you're under other. Yep. Hey, do you want to buy me undies? Sure, why not? <laughs> you know what? Okay. I'll bring in two Nameless. I'm going to bring in one more Stromgold Scourge. We wanted one more land, didn't we? 19 lands? Maybe that's enough? The fact that we had all look at monthly rations of Frank's Warren undies is proof that this capitalist society is on the brink of ruin. Socialism now. Oh my god. I blame so many of you for the downfall of this stream. What if this guy was a Minotaur Knight? Wouldn't that be sick? You could just discard hack into him and then you could just keep playing it as a 2-2. Two -two, or a 4-3 for 2. How did you guys know about the vending machine in Tokyo that sells my underwear? That's awkward. I'm going to play it like this. I like this version a lot, he said before actually trying the deck. Oh, look at this Blood Brawler hand. It's funny we took out the Lupine prototypes because this hand is prime for some prototypes. What are you going to take? You take my this guy? You're going to take one of the Blood Rage, Blood Rage Brawlers? Joke's on you, buddy. They're all going to the graveyard anyway. I like undies. I still like undies. What kind of undies do you like, Senator? Senator, what kind of undies do you like? Senator. <laughs> do you like undies, Senator? Oh, the opponent gave me an old pig, 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 which is solid reference. That's a... I'm going to chat solely through emojis here.
So I have half a box of M19 sitting around. And yesterday I got this feeling. I was like, I should open this one pack sitting right here. It had a nickel bolus in it. What's the sign, do you think? Pig 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 is like one of the first Frank memes. Um, we're gonna discard. We'll play you, we'll get a red. Play this guy, and we're just gonna discard a land here. And then he's gonna get fatal pushed, which is sad, but that's life, you know what I mean? Life is just having your Minotaur fatal pushed. Fatally pushed. Yep, see you later. <laughs> Never didn't have it. Is there a clip that explains? No, it's not a clip really. It's just one of my first uh, things I would do. This guy's legendary, so that's kind of rough. Oh, he has to be on the battlefield to cast the knights for free, and that's interesting. Oh, wow. That's unbeatable for us. Yeah, that's no bueno. I gave you a pig, pig, pig. I was like, pig, 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 pig. So when I would have, um, when our opponent would have uh, Flint Hoof Boar in play, I would just instinctually say pig, 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 pig on the video, in the videos. And uh, people actually loved it. <laughs> and so that's actually how I met Yokum and Mia, who are two longtime fans of the stream. And two of my favorite people ever. And uh, that was like Mia's favorite thing ever. And so that's why she actually got me the first time I met them. Mia actually had a gifted Minecraft pig for me. And I still have that pig. He's right up there. He's one of my f most prized possessions. And um, that's that's what initially caused the, um, the, the subscriber badge to be a pig. Yeah, I'm pretty sure right-click concede is how we beat this. It's not... Uh, <laughs> It's not looking great. Oh, we have no cards in hand, so that's good. The problem is we have no answer for a card like this. Do we just want some fatal pushes? Maybe. Ideally, so I think our win condition now is to draw three collective brutalities and six and two lands. I'll take it. They have another one, so they're just gonna play that. Oh, well then, I'll sack this guy. I'll lose two. Huh. Just player, right? Each opponent? Sure. I'll attack you with both. Why not? You're going to kill this guy, undoubtedly. No? You're not going to kill that guy. Oh, this guy. Actually, if they kill this guy again, we're dead, right? So we just hope they don't have an answer. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I forgot about that. And... Okay, sure. <laughs> Gray Merchant for 10 is also good. Yeah, that's also a solid strategy. Wait, hold on. Do we only take 10? Oh, I thought it was twice as much. It's actually, that's a ridiculous. That is, I guess it is a two point. It is a life swing for both if you, oh, big game hunter seems great here. All right, so. All right, let's do it. This is when I question, like, obliterate is a messed up card to begin with. The, tra the trample, you're like, oh, I can just chump block. No, I can't. I'll just take three and sacrifice two permanents. Thankfully, Frix and Obliterator has a very, very restrictive mana cost. Wow, this is a... <sighs> if I was on the draw, I'd probably keep this. Being on the play, oh boy. 
Oh boy. Land on top. Can't go to five with this hand. All right. Oh, Obliterator, Liliana, Dread Shade. Oh, Liliana of the Last Hope. Uh, I'm actually gonna take the Liliana here because we can actually we have double Liliana for your Obliterator, which is nice. We also had Liliana was also an out for the previous game. Okay, well, that's fine. That was a good draw. You're gonna take one of our two Lilianas. I don't think taking Bloodgast is correct. Okay, well. Did not get there. Urborg. Urborg. Land. That's kind of like a land. Actually, if we hit a land, it's actually going to be insane. We did not. We did not hit a land. That would have been good. One land would have actually let us play two blood gas and a hollow one this turn. Instead of getting eight power on board, we got none. So Nykthos and Dreadshade are gone. Well, this is worse now, but it's still a thing we're going to do. Yep. Three mana, five mana, three mana, three mana, three mana. Sad days. Trample actually isn't a black ability. That's actually a good point. I'm going to look up black creatures with Trampa. Trample, Trampa, Trampa. Wow. Who says that? Trample, uh, black, exactly these colors. There are 41 cards with black cards with trample. That's still not a lot considering all the black creatures there are. I guess trample is usually prominent on uh, big demons. Demons usually have trample. Obnixilis, Razaketh, uh, Liege of the Pit, Lord of the Pit, Demon of Death's Gate, Demon Lord Bells and Lock. Most of these demons have trample. So that's an interesting... Yeah, we're just dead here. Okay, well, we had a good run. I'm not going to come up against a Phyrexian Obliterator, especially when we only have one activation. Um, okay, I don't like this as much because you have to have it in play to cast the spells. Which also makes Nameless Inversion worse. I actually think this guy's not as good. Considering we don't want uh, to have to have no cards in hand, we just want to be able to discard things. I think these are fine. Uh, we also have Fiery Temper. So I'm gonna put fire. Oh, what is this promo? That looks weird. And I would actually probably just add one more land. I think we want one more swamp. And I think this is probably where I'd where I'd put the deck at. I don't think it's in super super heavy fighting condition, but I think it does have answers to things. Um. Like, it has six discard spells, it has three collective brutalities, which might be too many. I actually might want to relegate one of these to the sideboard and add, like, another zombie infestation or something. You just want to make sure you hit land drops. But either way, um, I did have fun with this list, and I think this is a better configuration than the original one. I know we're not trying to be hellbent, we're just trying to discard the cards in our hand, but I think that's stronger because the only card that really cared about us being hellbent was Illus Illusionary Pet... Illus imaginary pet and lupine prototype and both of those aren't there three squeeze now no there's four it's where they made two different squeeze oh no there's only two squeeze i see what you're saying you guys are asking no there's only two squeeze there was the original squee and then there's the new squee the original squee was uh it came out in like mercadian masks i want to say that was the original Squee, but that was just reprinted in M in in tenth edition. So, either way, 
for those watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Slam those like and subscribe buttons. You can check me out on Twitch in the link in the description below and also on Patreon. Both of those things are great ways to support the channel if you want to. Uh, you can also go to meandies.com slash Frank Lepore. And Valley Man <laughs> does not know how to actually stop gifting subs. I'm okay with it. I really appreciate it. Hooky, welcome to the sub or welcome to the uh, the stream. Really appreciate it. Salt Eye Brood, whatever you want to say. You know what I'm you know what I'm getting at here. And uh, also, if you guys want to have your own decks critiqued by me, check out the information in my Twitch profile below or on my Patreon page. You can find out how to do that there. And uh, what I was saying, meundies.com slash Frank fifteen percent off, free returns, free shipping, and then we both we both win. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Really appreciate the support.